um, the mixer changes only FC. So with what we have up here, um, FC3. Now, this is the notation, you know, for the mixer, we get the sum and difference frequencies out of that. So you can pick out either one. Okay, so that's what that represents. But the delta F3 is the same as delta F2. The, the mixer does not change the, the frequency deviation. So I want to look at, let's look at the, the frequency multiplier, how, how to actually do that. Uh, what kind of hardware device does that? So we'll, we'll look at that block there and in a little more detail. A frequency multiplier consists of a nonlinear device. And then a bandpass filter. So I call this VI of T. And again with FC1 delta F1. And we'll call this signal Vx of t, this intermediate signal. And then the output is Vo of t. And it has Fc2 and delta F2. So both these together make up this frequency multiplier. Okay. And the, the non, the nonlinear device, Vx of t would be related to the input. It's, this is from a power series expansion of the input output re uh, relationship. So it could be a diode, you know, we've got the exponential relationship or a MOSFET where you've got that square law relationship. Okay, but, And then, you know, higher order terms could be, you know, a, a, a VI cubed, a VI to the fourth. Okay. Uh, typically here, only VI squared or VI cubed are significant. And we'll see that these actually correspond to different frequencies and our bandpass filter will, will pick out the one we want. But let's, let's look at, so if we, if we filter out everything but the squared term, it's called a frequency doubler. If we filter out everything but the cubed term, it's called a frequency tripler. We're, we're gonna look at the, the frequency doubler, consider the, the VI squared term where VI of T now is our FM signal. Okay. FC one of T plus two pi uh, KF M of T DT. Now this is going back to our original expression for FM, but it does apply to narrow band FM. It's just that when this term is smaller, we've got a, an alternate form of that, an approximate form of that expression we can use. But this, this is the input coming into this, into this frequency um, multiplier. Now the VI squared term would be, um, so cosine squared, you get one half plus one half cosine of twice the angle. So we get AC squared 
And then I'm actually dropping the factors of one half because this A2, the, the constant terms aren't really relevant, but I'll get an AC squared cosine of, and then you know twice the angle here, I'll get two pi, two FC1 T plus two pi, two KF integral of MT. Dt. Okay. Now the the bandpass filter. Passes. Only. The frequency. Around. Two FC. So our final output then would be AC squared. And that's a constant term. We don't really care about that, whether that's squared or not, but cosine of two pi, two FC one T plus two pi, two KF, the integral. Okay. Now this is still an FM signal with its carrier frequency, what do we call FC2, equal to 2 FC1 and delta F2 because I've actually doubled KF here. Okay. And delta F is uh, KF times my, my uh, uh, peak amplitude. Remember, I get my delta F by taking the derivative of this, but I still have this constant. Uh, delta F is KF times, you know, M peak. Here now it would be 2 KF times M peak. So I've essentially doubled my frequency deviation as well, or, or doubled beta. Um, so you, you can cascade doublers to get a frequency multiplication of two to the n. So one doubler would double the frequency and the delta F, two doublers would increase both by four. Three doublers would increase both by a factor of eight. Yeah. It is, thank you. Two delta F1, that's, that's, the, that's the whole purpose of this thing. So that's pretty important. Okay. We, we actually would like it just to do that. We don't really care about the, it increases the carrier frequency but usually we get the carrier frequency we want by, by using that, that mixer term. Um, if triplers are used, you actually get a frequency multiplication of, of three to the N. Okay. And then uh, about the bandpass filter, the, the bandwidth of, bandpass, of the bandpass filter is from, from Carson's rule. That would be uh, two delta FC two plus my baseband signal. Now that doesn't change. The, the W of my baseband signal does not change here. Okay, so this, this has a two delta F component, but, but the, the W of my original baseband that goes into this formula doesn't change from the frequency multiplier. So I'm gonna look, look at, a, at an example. Um, and then I have given you a homework problem that's pretty similar to this one. And this will certainly be a problem on, on the next test because in the, these frequency multipliers are kind of a fundamental, just like heterodyning the super heterodyne receiver, how that works, understanding how a frequency multiplier is kind of a 
one of the things everyone comes out of a communication theory class knowing something about. So I want to leave this block diagram up here. So we've got a narrow band. So what this, these narrow band FM systems usually have an adjustable delta F. Okay. So in this case, it's a, we have a narrow band FM system that's produce, capable of producing an FM signal with a delta F less than 500 Hertz. And that, that's adjustable and we'll see how that comes into play. And a carrier frequency of 20 kilohertz, okay. which again is really in the audio frequency range, but small frequency deviation, small carrier frequency. is used to generate wideband FM with delta F equal to 75 kilohertz, which is FM radio actually, and a carrier frequency of 100 megahertz. So the typical FM radio carrier frequency and frequency deviation. Uh, and the baseband signal bandwidth is 15 kilohertz. Again, that's typical of like FM radio for, for music. So what what we're asked to find here are how many doublers also uh, what should the local oscillator frequency be this component so how many of these things do we need what's the local oscillator frequency and then the bandwidth of the bandpass filter and so what does that need to be in order to okay so now you, you have to tackle them in the, kind of the order listed there we need to get a delta F of 75 kilohertz given a delta F of up to 500 hertz. So the question is how many doublers do we need? So in part A, <coughs> we need to find N so that two to the N is 75 kilohertz over 500. 75,000 over 500, what is that? 150, okay. Now, if you, if you remember a little bit about your binary number system, how many, how many bits do you need to represent 150 things? Yes, seven is 128, right? And then eight is 256. So we'd actually need kind of eight doublers. If you actually want to solve for N, um, you just take the log. Actually, you can use any logarithm base. It doesn't matter. But this would then become N log 10 of two log, just using the properties of logarithms. So N is log 10 of 150 over log 10 of two. So what does someone have your calculator? What does that give you? And actually it doesn't matter what base get it directly if we if you if you had a log base two on your calculator but most calculators don't so using either log base 10 
or natural log. Should be seven something, 7.22, right? Because we knew it turned out to be between seven and eight. Okay, I'm just showing you a, a more general method and certainly that would get you there. But so you can't use, you can't find 0 0.22 of a multiplier. Okay, so we have to round up here round up to n equal eight, okay. So the delta F1 we need then, so two to the n in this problem would be 256. So the delta F1 we, we need would be 75,000 divided by 256. So what's that equal to? Now this should turn out to be less than 500 because we rounded up and that's why we rounded up. What's, what's it turn out to be? Oh, okay, 292 Hertz. So, <laughs> but this part was adjustable. So we adjust the Delta F here for 292 so that when we follow this thing by, in this case, eight doublers, we get a delta F2 of 75 kilohertz, okay. So delta F2 is 256 times delta F1. And if we've done all this right, well, I mean, it should be exactly 75 kilohertz to within some rounding error there on that division, okay. But this also increases FC2, which is in kind of an unwanted consequence. FC2 now would be 256 times FC1, 256 times 20 kilohertz. Okay. Now don't make the mistake of using like two to the 7.22 here. Okay, we're actually using eight doublers. So both the frequency deviation, the delta F, and the carrier frequency are increased by 256. So, so what's this equal to? 512, 5.12 meg? Is that right? Um, okay, so that, that we really answered the first question. We need eight doublers okay, for a frequency multiplication of 256. Now the local oscillator will translate our carrier frequency from 512 megahertz to the desired carrier frequency of 100 megahertz. Okay. It, it does not change delta F. Okay. So part B, So delta F3 equals delta F2, which is 75 kilohertz. But now coming into my mixer, here's the, the problem. This is 512 megahertz. This is 100 megahertz. So what does the local oscillator frequency need to be. Yeah, the, got two choices always, right? The sum and the, the sum and the difference. So what is it? Uh, 94.88 megahertz would be the difference. So 94.88 plus the 5.12 would give me the, the 100 or 105.12 megahertz, either of those, because then the difference would be, and so with the 94.88, I get out to, I'd get out the sum, which is at 100, I'd also get out the difference, but then my bandpass filter is going to filter out the difference one and give me the sum one. Here with 105, the difference is 100, the sum would be 110, again, my bandpass filter would would pass through the one around 100 and, and filter out the other one. Okay, so let's just 
um, arbitrarily say this one, 94.88 megahertz. Okay, but you, you've got your choice there. Now, now C, the bandwidth from Carson's rule is two delta F plus W. Okay. So now this is 75K for delta F. That's what's coming in at our band in our bandpass filter. Okay, the, the bandwidth of the of coming out of our uh, mixer doesn't depend on the carrier frequency, right? That signal's centered at the carrier frequency, but we're talking about the bandwidth. And then the W is given as 15K. So that's 80, 90, 180 kilohertz. So, so my bandpass filter really should be centered at 100 megahertz, right? And then extend 90 kilohertz. This needs to be 180 kilohertz. Extend uh, 90 kilohertz, 0.9. So what is that? 99.1. To ninety nine point to one hundred one hundred point nine megahertz. Uh, nine, yeah, ninety nine point oh one, ninety nine point nine one, and a hundred point oh nine. Is that right? Yeah, ninety kilohertz would be the edges of this bandpass filter. And then in, in this case, the other one, the difference frequency is down to 94.88 minus 5.12. So bandpass filter just needs to pass through the right, the sum frequency. Okay. Any questions on that? Okay, I, I will, let me throw up here. Um, I know one of the homework problems I signed for today, we'll get you started on that. Is, can you see that? So I think I gave, there's three homework problems. Um, the, but the, this is one of them. A signal with W equal four kilohertz is transmitted using um, indirect FM. Uh, and we want the final carrier to be one megahertz and the final delta F to be 12 kilohertz. There's a narrow band FM generator that produces a carrier of 10 kilohertz and an adjustable delta F of 100. So how many frequency doublers are required? So I'll give you a few minutes to work on part A, okay? So we want a delta F of 12K and then our narrow band FM system produces a delta F of less than 100, okay? so. Yeah, you can go ahead and work the rest of the.
So what's 12K divided by 100? 120, right? So how many frequency doublers would you need? Seven, right? Because two to the seven is, so if you actually did that log calculation, you're gonna get six point something, round up to seven doublers. And so the, the, the frequency multiplication there would actually be then 128. So you divide the 12K by 128 to see what the delta F should be adjusted to of the narrow band FM system. And then the, the frequency coming out of uh, this narrow band FM generator then would be 128 times 10K or uh, 1.28 megahertz, right? And then we, which is actually above our desired carrier frequency. So then we could, we could, if I did that right, so we could mix with, a, and you've got two choices. I'll let you work the rest of that out though. I think that's the, the local oscillator frequency and then the center frequency of the, of the bandpass filter. Okay. But that's, that's it for today, so. Is that from the textbook? 4.9. Yeah, uh, so th that one's asking about the, the difference in frequencies between, so kind of, what I did there was, and it, it's got two different cases. Um, it, it's using, it's varying the instantaneous frequency of the transmitted signal like that, okay? So the, the return signal will vary in the same way, but the return signal is just delayed because it propagates out, bounces off something. And so the delay is like that. Now, what I did was say, okay, uh, you know, the difference here is going to go the, 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 on the extremes, there's no delay, in which case the, the, the difference between um, the two would be uh, zero if, if tau is zero. The other case is if there's a maximum delay so that you have this peak difference here, okay. In that case, with the maximum delay with tau equal to, what is that, one over, one over F zero. No, one over, it's half that, isn't it? One over two F zero. Then you get uh, a, freq a peak frequency difference of uh, two delta F. Uh, so uh, let me call this, since they've already got a delta F, then the frequency difference is, is two delta F. So what I said, it looks like the, the peak frequency D, so FD max, FD max. Now the frequency difference here in this case that's the maximum, but there's also this point where it's actually zero. So I said FD max is just actually proportional to delta T. It's gonna be two delta F times one over two F zero times tau. So when tau is zero, FD max is zero. And when tau is one over two F, when tau is uh, one over two F zero, so this should actually be proportional to um, 2F0 tau. I think that's right. So when tau is one over 2F0, this gives me the, the, that maximum frequency deviation. And you know, I didn't look at all these different cases, but I said that it's probably right. It's probably a linear 
linear function of the, the difference there, just getting the max. Now they actually asked for the average. So I just took half of this, saying that the average is, is half of that to get, I think, the expression I had, delta F. Um, it's not really, I don't think, an FM problem so much as, you know, they're saying this is an application of FM that, you know, I, it, I can use some sort of detector to infer w what the delay here is, get the actual delay based on averaging over. It, it's more, I think, interpreting, uh, you know, these these different waveforms here and how to how to calculate this kind of av average value. So I pr I may have cheated a little bit, but it seemed like a, that's a reasonable assumption that f d max with tau equal to zero this gives me zero with tau equal to one over two f zero it gives me the 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 peak and I think it's probably uh, almost certain it is a, a linear relationship to tau. Yep. All right, See, have a good weekend. Um, yeah, it looks like we won't be offering, there will just be um, Dr. Latfalian's elective. Um, there wasn't enough interest in the either class. So, so, <laughs> well, you also have all the physics and math classes that you can take as electives. We'll, we'll accept those, but we need to get more faculty in to, 